Hello and welcome to another Tech Byte video from CMG. My name is Faraj and I'm going to demo parameter definitions in CMOS AI. We have three main types of variables in CMOS AI. Most commonly used are continuous parameters. In this case, we have upper and lower limits for the variable and the optimizer is free to choose any value within that range. The second types are discrete parameters. In this case, we have preset values that the optimizer is only uh, allowed to choose within that range. So this can be real number, say you're choosing the drill bit size uh, for, the, for the well radius, or you can it can be an integer number, like a block address uh, that's going to be your perforation. It can be a text uh, in the case of uh, having different realizations. Uh, those realizations can be saved in different include files and the name of the include file can be a text that CMOS can choose uh, uh, from. Obviously the text uh, cannot go into mathematical calculations. So CMOS assigns, um, sets a flag for each of those uh, text or file names. The third types are the formulas. In this case, the values are not um, automatically set um, preset. Uh, the, 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 they are inputs into these formulas, which are um, selected by CMOS. And then there's a script or a formula that to, to process uh, to return the, the results. Uh, the syntax can be in Python or in JScript, and the returning value can be a simple number, like um, a simple real number, or it can be complex outputs text, like uh, relative memory numbers. We have examples um, in CMOS folder uh, presenting uh, the ways to create um, uh, relative memory from the Cori uh, calculations. And to define these, uh, all these variables, we have um, options in CMOS. Uh, we can either use cedit, uh, which is a text editor, or um, we can use a special version of uh, Builder. Let's go to the CMOS interface and see how it works in, re in, in the uh, software. So all the parameters need to be defined under parameter section that's uh, located under the parameterization main branch, and we can start defining new variables using the cedit. So if I click on cedit, that opens my CMM file, which is, uh, when we start, is usually a copy of your that file. So if I zoom in, you can see it's a usual data set, and um, I can parameterize any um, character within uh, this text. So if in this case, we have a well, which is um, uh, located in the middle of the reservoir, and we are uh, changing the permeability around this well, trying to match the, um, uh, the, the pressure response. Uh, so within the box around the well, we, we, we can change the permeability and Builder writes out these keywords. Now, uh, the default value is one. Uh, we are going to uh, parameterize this value and see whether changing the perm around the, uh, the well in the damage zone can help with the match. So if I select the, the permeability, say it's create a parameter, we select and right click and say create parameter and we can call this uh, perm uh, malt. So that's my first variable. You can see uh, CMOS automatically uh, created the syntax. These are the flags that CMOS understands. There's a variable inside and I can um, use the same syntax on the other um, um, boxes around the well to, um, to, to change all, all the uh, blocks around the, the well in, with the same multiplier. Uh, so I can copy and paste these to other values, you know, replace this, the other values. 
Or alternatively, you can use the Alt key. So hold the Alt key and select all the current values and just control V and replace um, all the uh, one uh, multipliers of one with the new variables we're defining. On top of that, I would like to also change the extent of one of these boxes. Um, uh, in, in this case, I'm uh, changing the, the extension in J direction for the layer one. So th this is the I, this is the extent in J, and this is K. So if I want to extend this a bit further, um, uh, so instead of 78, uh, let's parameterize 78. And um, let's call this J extent, J ex uh, extent. And that's my um, new variable defining how uh, extended this damage zone is on the J direction for layer one. Uh, the next uh, variable that I'd like to is my, I'd like to parameterize is my include file for the porosity. So porosity is coming from this include file and I would, I'd like to try other um, versions of the porosity. So select the file name and say create a parameter. I can name this as pore set and that's my uh, new variable. So I can save this file now and I can close. That's uh, my first set of variables. Uh, meantime, I, can, I would like to also show you the builder uh, interface. Uh, so if you click on builder, that's going to open a, a restricted version of builder. Here, uh, you have the builder interface in the back, but you can't do anything. What are we going to use in this case is this um, uh, three view, which gives you access to different um, parts of the data set. My base data set had uh, used the query correlations embedded in builder to create relative permeabilities. Uh, the inputs into those correlations are stored under um, uh, relative uh, permeability um, a branch. So set one, you can see my, uh, these are the inputs into the correlations and any, uh, any uh, correlation, any inputs, you can see the, the tag attached to. So in this example, we're going to parameterize SWCon, conate water saturations and critical water saturations. So select the first one and uh, let's name and press add. Name this as SWCon. That's my new variable defined. And I also would like to define um, a new variable for SWCrit. Uh, that's my uh, new variable. That's all I wanted to do. So I, okay, uh, so I say OK. And that's going to save and save. And um, I can close this. Now, if I uh, click on Import, CMOS is going to read all the um, flags that we created in the CMM file and import those as variables. So the first one in the list is J, exten J extension. So if you remember, that was the extent, uh, the block address. Uh, the, the default value is 71, and we have continuous real for block address. That's obviously. Uh, something we have to change. So I'm going to change this to uh, discrete integer. And I can uh, import in, uh, put individual values here. Or I can use this generate button and say generate some integer numbers between 78 and say 90. And we want to cover um, all the uh, ranges within uh, uh, the right resolution. So if I say OK, that's going to populate those numbers. And now CMOS has choices to make um, uh, um, for extension. The second uh, parameter in the list is uh, permeability multiplier. It's um, by default is 1, and CMOS automatically assigned 25% below and above for the range. Uh, let's cap the, the maximum uh, per, per, 
permeability multiplier to one. We don't want the damage zone to have higher permeability than the, the blocks around. And we are happy with continuous real. It can be any number. The next one in the list is uh, porosity um, realization. So uh, this is automatically set to discrete text and uh, we have to provide uh, some valid uh, text for the variable. So if you say insert, I can use this button and browse for the, uh, the path for these um, include files. So the first one, uh, the second one, they're all stored under poor realization folder in my uh, machine. So this, and the third one is stored in the same folder. If I say OK, obviously, as we talk, they have to have a numerical value. I say one, two, three. And I'm not setting probability. And they're going to be equally probable in this case. Uh, the next one is um, SWCon. And then we have the SWCrit. So uh, logically, there's a connection between these two variables. We can't uh, let them. Um, be an independent variable both. So SWCrate has to be equal or larger than SWCon. To, to, to get this link, let's first uh, set the SWCon. Um, um, I'm going to first set, set the SWCon. Uh, let's choose a range between 0 0.2 and 0 0.30. For SWCrit, uh, I'd like to create a link to SWCon. So we add a new variable, which is going to set the increment uh, to SWCon. So SW increment, and let's set the default value of 0. And let's say that's between 0 and uh, 0.1. OK. So now what I can uh, uh, do is to change the type to formula uh, for this W create and create a link that uh, between SW incremental and SW con uh, creating uh, returning the SW create. So let's change to formula and uh, here we can write the uh, the code. In this case, it's a very simple. Uh, summation of uh, two variables. Uh, Cmos automatically stores the variable names and some useful uh, mathematical functions uh, library here. So I'm going to use that and say SW increment increment plus the SW con uh, is going to return SW create for me. Uh, we can evaluate and check this um, Syntax, if you say um, check for errors, uh, this confirms that the value return to CMOS in this case is 0 0.2 because uh, SW increment is initialized with value of 0. But uh, during the run, each of these two will have a number, and SW create will be uh, calculated um, uh, on the fly. So that sets all our variables. Uh, just um, as a, a side note, because we are using the um, um, builder um, query correlations to, uh, to generate uh, relative permittees on the fly, you have to go to pre-simulation command in CMOS and insert a silent builder uh, session into our CMOS study. The reason is that so now uh, when CMOS sets uh, the these new endpoints, a new curve, a totally new relative permeability table has to be um, generated within CMOS, and that's only uh, possible uh, in Silent Builder. Or you might uh, have a code that uh, returns those. Um, uh, the total tables. In this case, we'll be choosing the simpler um, approach, which is using the builder. So that's all we had to do for the uh, for the parameter 
uh, setups. Uh, I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Uh, 